Look, after one wash. You're blacklisted, you can't come back. You might think it's blown up. <laughs> Welcome back guys to another NVM Daily and in this daily, it's a VAG kind of day. What the f So first off today, we've got this Mark 7.5R in for NVM Stage 3 ECU and DSG mapping. The car's actually been fitted with all the hardware for the Stage 2, and now it's been fitted with the hybrid turbocharger. This is a Venom 460 turbocharger, and we'll see what we can achieve from this setup today. So the actual original turbocharger actually failed on this car um, and that's the reason why the customer went with a hybrid upgrade. Obviously we offer the NVM 460G and the new NVM 550R so if you are looking for a hybrid turbocharger for your VAG car I'll leave a link below for you guys to go purchase one. So as I said, it's a VAG type of day. We've got this Mark V GTI in, that's already been tuned somewhere else. Customer's got a few concerns with the hesitation, it kind of attempting to stall, DSG problems. So we're gonna give it a full um, inspection, diagnostics, and pull the plugs out, check all of that. Also, we've got this Seat Leon FR back in today for tuning. We did actually get it in a couple of videos ago, so I'll leave a link up there for you guys to see actually what was wrong with it and why we couldn't tune it. But it's back in today and it's got a fresh KL3 turbo, it's got fresh injectors, um, so we've strapped it down to the dyno and we're gonna do a couple of base runs and see if it's running nice and healthy before we start stage two plus calibration. Stage two plus calibration means that there is a substitute for fueling at some point, and in this case, it's got a high pressure fuel pump internal upgrade. So we target about 130, 135 bar of fuel pressure on the stock turbo. We have covered stage two plus tuning many a time. So if you haven't seen one of our builds, I'll leave a link up there as well. Alex, if you're watching this, I hope this car has zero problems. I did tell you, if it comes in again and has a problem, you're blacklisted, you can't come back. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. What do you think it'll make? What do I think it'll make? <laughs> I can't honestly say. I mean, Stacey Plus, we target like 290 ish brake horsepower and about 520 newton meters of torque. So it'll be interesting to see what we get. But the main thing is making sure it's right. I mean, this car had loads of problems before. So uh, I just hope it's all sorted. So it doesn't look good times. What's that? <laughs> Already there's a problem. His PCV is absolutely leaking and uh, yeah, it's, it, there's oil everywhere. So we're just gonna have to order a new one and uh, get it fitted before we run it up on the dyno. The wall of fame is growing. I said the wall of fame is the wall of exhaust. Uh, more people are leaving exhaust behind and not picking them up. If that's one of your exhausts, give us a call and come pick it up. Otherwise we're gonna scrap them. You gotta love TFSIs. You think yours is a TFSI because it says it on the engine case, doesn't it? But it's not, it's actually a TSI. Yours is an EA888 Gen 1, which we're gonna go stage 10 with. So yeah, typical day, another daily. Um, once these cars are out, once that car's done, we'll get the Golf R in, um, change the high pressure fuel pump over, and then put it on the dyno and start tuning on that too. Well, it starts and idles, there's no fluctuation. What the actual f I did tell you, innit? Look how much of my time, dyno time, the effort that goes in through this guys if your car's not right please don't book it in 
make sure it's right before it comes in because we don't allocate workshop time for cars that go wrong we're actually fully booked on the ramp four to five weeks in advance so if something goes wrong on the dyno you have to take it back and you're just wasting time and money So the Golf R is on the ramp. We are taking the high pressure fuel pump off to put the Ultratech internals in. This allows us to run a steady 220 bar of fuel pressure without any drop, up to around 550, 560 horsepower. Obviously this turbocharger is aimed at about 460 horsepower, um, but yeah, it's better safe than sorry. So you know like the turbocharger blew on this, customers replaced it, but there's loads of oil left in the exhaust system. So it's just, yeah, it's dripping oil out the exhaust. It's deft in it. Like, I always tell anyone who's got a blown turbo and they've changed it to kind of, uh, yeah, get the exhaust off, give it a jet wash properly, get rid of all the oil. Otherwise it creates back pressure, believe it or not, because it lines the internal walls of the exhaust and that in itself slows the exhaust gases coming out. So it'd be interesting to see what we can get from this today. So old brew fire service are here, giving everyone a bit of a heads up and some fire training. I think they heard that we do some uh, some flamage on the dyno. So. You get to the fires quicker. Yeah. Bring a big red one round. Just got the new Volvo. Yeah. Restricted to 56. Once you press the nines and the lights come on, it de-restricts it and gives it more power. Wow. <laughs> Turbo boost. <laughs> So our high pressure fuel pump's now on the Golf. Just gonna put a baseline um, calibration on there for the hybrid turbocharger. Again, we haven't tuned one of these turbochargers before, so we don't know exactly what sort of set point and boost pressure ratio we're running, but we're just gonna go as safe as we can um, before we start adding more boost. We have to call the fire brigade, you know. So it may look like we need to stop here, but looking at the data log, it's completely fine, so I'm gonna continue. It is the old residual oil in the actual exhaust system that we're burning off. So we'll carry on our calibration and see what we can achieve today. So final results for this smoky beast. 453 brake horsepower, 607 newton meters of torque. We could actually take it a bit more, but that back pressure is increasing slightly because of that oil residue in there. So we're gonna give it back to the customer, let him clear it out just by driving it, burning off that residual oil and get it back in for some dyno runs. But let's take it for a drive. Out in the smoky bandit. I can't believe it. You know, anytime I tell customers they're doing a turbo change swap, They've got to clear out the intercooler, the intake manifold, the charge pipe, and the exhaust. If you're driving a part throttle all the way down, it's not going to burn off. So I'm going to get up to 800 degrees C. Frustrating. 
Cars running well. 450 odd brake horsepower, 670, 99 run. Well, I think, yeah, 460 is about the limit on these. Whereas the so NVM 460G can take like 480, 490 brake. And I have a new 550R. 550, 550. Well, I think with Mephil, it'll make 600. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It hasn't been an easy one and it just covers what we get through on a daily basis and the problems we see on a daily basis at Envy Motorsport. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.